What's going on guys? JPS back for another video and I'm here with Arturo. What's good? And today we're going to be reacting to Europe banned these American foods. Here's why. And this is another Evan Edinger video segueing from our previous reaction to workers rights in the UK versus the United States. Yeah. Uh, this is a topic that came up in a previous reaction we did about the food quality and food standards and the differences in that between, well, I think it was Britain at the time, but Europe as a whole yeah. and uh, America. And there are quite some stark differences. Yeah. So I, th I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot more, <sighs> I hate making blanket statements like this, but there's a lot of processed food in the United States. Yeah, that's that's that, a fact. Yeah, no, yeah that, that is a fact. And it's, it's everywhere. You can't, you can't really escape it, honestly. It's in every, like almost every store you go to. And the fresh fruit and milk and all that is so expensive, but then the two liter bottle of soda and bags of chips are yeah. like half the price. So. Exactly. So it's a terrible, uh, it's a bad it's, system. It's just an endless cycle. Yeah. So anyways, let's get into this. Uh, some of the uh, American foods that have been banned in Europe that we probably have been eating every day. We'll find <laughs> out. Um, hit that like button, guys. Hit subscribe. Consider joining the Patreon. First link in description for full reactions to British shows and movies. Let's get right into this. Honey Bunches of Oats is my favorite cereal of all time. I even said so in my British vs. American cereal tier list video I made somewhere above the screen. But did you know, it's actually banned for sale in the UK because of its carcinogenic additives? Mm. This is how I pour milk. <laughs> It's real good though. So today we're gonna to be looking at a lot of foods that are enjoyed in the States. He's, he's like, he's banned really quirky, in the UK and EU yeah, for various reasons. And in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna be doing a part two to this where we look at the vice versa there, the EU foods that are banned in the US. So be sure to subscribe, okay? It'll be coming soon. Or ring my bell. Actually, speaking really? of bells. I don't expect bells. there to be EU the first foods item. banned in the US. Damn, I didn't yeah, even think yeah, about I that. Know. Interesting. We well, gotta check we, that out yeah. too. <laughs> They're not gonna like that. <laughs> They'll get the bad side of them. <laughs> I think with food, though, we're probably more on the, Yeah, the overall, yeah, we're probably overall. relatively worse, definitely. <laughs> on our list today is milk, techies. or rather, what they put into milk in the U.S. Recombinant somatotropin, RBST, also previously used to be called bovine growth hormone, is a genetically engineered hormone injected into dairy cows to increase the means of milk production. Now, if you aren't American, I'm assuming you've heard of bovine growth hormone at some point in your life. I know growing up, my mom would tell me that Girls were getting to puberty earlier and earlier because of all the hormones that they're pumping into the cows, which is coming out in the milk. Now, that actually was fully a myth and there's no science to substantiate that. And in fact, the RBST that is put into cows, in American cows at least, has no scientific backing to prove that it has any negative repercussions on humans at all. However, that didn't stop the EU and UK following up with banning its sale of milk from RBST cows anywhere within their bounds because of the effect it has on the cows themselves. EU commissions that did studies on RBST in cows found that the quality of life of cows given the hormone was drastically worse than cows that were not. If you think about it, their udders are just getting so much more full than they're meant to, weighing them down, being uncomfortable. It is a bit of a contentious issue, especially with the whole got milk, uh, milk lobby in the States really trying to push its way into EU markets, but the EU being very firm. There are some reports in the Do you remember that when we were yeah. in school and stuff? Yeah, got milk. Um, what I wanted to say though was this RBST difference. So like the United States doesn't care if it doesn't affect humans, right. but it affects animals and we, we're not as big on the animal rights. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's come up in videos in the past. Like I think they treat their animals a lot better in Britain and in Europe here. It's right. They're just kind of a means to an end. Yeah, exactly. Which I don't think is very ethical. No. Like, uh, not, not as not much as ethical in this country. <laughs> I, I I believe in like if you take care of the animal, like it'll it'll provide like a better meal or whatever type yeah. of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you have like free range chicken that are that that aren't like all up in cages and stuff, and they can like roam. And I feel like it makes I feel like it does make a difference in the quality of the food. I don't know if it's placebo, but those that free range stuff always tastes better. Yeah, exactly. It always tastes and better. And organic and everything. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like it definitely is make does make a difference. Yeah. 90s that were purporting this to just be a complete trade war economic type of thing and that the EU made things up. But at the end of the day, the US's FDA or Food and Drug Administration have stated that food products made from RBST treated cows are safe for human consumption and no statistically significant difference exists between milk derived from RBST treated cows and not. And there's yet to be a conclusive study disproving that. Now, despite this being a worse experience for the cows in the States that are given this hormone, you might be wondering, well, why do they do it anyway? Well. The answer's kind of easy. 
<laughs> the average cow injected with RBST nets the farmer an extra $15.88 in profit. That's wow. per cow. Got to milk them for all they're worth. No bull. It's Next up, up, everybody's bro. favorite gamer soda, Mountain Dew. Everybody knows Mountain Dew, right? It's like the super punchy, citrusy flavored soda that you're probably thinking, wait a minute, that's not banned in the EU. I've seen that. Well, you see, the original recipe for Mountain Dew included BVO, which caused it to be banned by both the EU and Japan because BVO, or brominated vegetable oil, contains bromine. What's wrong with bromine? That's usually what I say when someone tries to take my Mountain Dew, bro. My. Well, bromine is an element that, That's when good. it builds up in the body, has a very high potential to, I don't know, cause your skin damage, memory loss, nerve damage. That's the main reason why it's banned in Japan and the EU. And so Mountain Dew is like, we'll fix this recipe for you guys since you don't want nerve damage. The thing about BVO is that it was sensationally referred to as the thing that is in brominated flame retardant, just because that really spreads with Facebook moms. You know, like, oh my God, flame retardant in my child's drink. But the main problem that we had in our household with Mountain Dew was, any one of us had any Mountain Dew, we would be bouncing off the walls. The amount of sugar and Facts. caffeine in that stuff, yeah. boom, sure, large it's amounts crazy. of Some of them sugary drinks when I was a kid. Bro, oh yeah. my God. Bro, it's crazy. Like, I don't, soda should not have that much sugar. No, it really they, they, there's, It's too much. It's overload. Bro, some of them have like 40, 50, 60 grams 80, of sugar. Bro. Yeah, like The Fanas be having serving. like 75 grams of sugar. Bro, that's what I'm... Bottle. And people be feeding their kids like that, like it's nothing, bro. Like it's like, like it's milk, like it's their milk, bro. <laughs> Like that shit is bad. That ain't no milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it's sad, bro. Yeah, it's I like sad. I just said like since I like kinda like slowed down that sort of like a like a while ago, like years back, I started slowing down off sort of like now if I try it, it just it tastes it doesn't taste good anymore. Yeah. It's not enjoyable. It's just too sweet. Yeah. Like a lot of things here are just way too sweet. Also, bro, like I don't want sodas taking up my drink calories. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. no, I'm serious. That's what I think. Of. <laughs> Do I want the soda or do I want a guilt-free beer? Sorry, with no what's, sugar in it. What's the answer, bro? That's gonna make me feel. Guilt <laughs> <laughs> right. birth defects in newborns, but when used in a soda, it helps all the oil flavorings not dissolve, so that way they can separate and give you a nice in your mouth and in your womb, I guess. But if you are an American connoisseur of the Mountain Dew or the fabled Baja Blast, don't worry, it's not in the recipe anymore. So for the most part, you're fine. All I do know is. It's not illegal, and the FDA says it's okay. Now let's just have a look at the Walmart brand Mountain Dew oh, and- Oh no. <laughs> Ugh. Now this next one might ruffle a few feathers, but you might not know this. Chickens in the US are chlorinated. That means they are washed with a chlorine bath to prevent the spread of salmonella we shouldn't be and laughing, such bro. before you all eat your lovely chicken. Now, <laughs> this is absolutely- <laughs> Bro, like, I hate, like, whenever this is brought up anywhere in my life, like, yeah. I just hate thinking about it. Yeah. It's so, like, that's just off. That's just so off-putting. Um, on the eastern shore, there's a lot of these trucks, and they'll, they have these cages on the back just lined to the top in length with chickens, and they're squished together in those cages. There's feathers and chicken shit, and it just <laughs> smells. Like, that truck, if that truck drives by you on the interstate, roll those <laughs> windows up, turn the AC off. Oh, my God. It, Oofs, bro, it's disgusting. Yo, that's gross. Yeah, but like, that's the thing. We don't like being confronted with this because it is an ugly side of the United States. The way we, like our, our agriculture and, and general food practices. Yeah, exactly. No one likes to think about it. So yes, we're laughing because it's we're just, there's not really much that we can do about it, honestly. Yeah. Like, we can know. do our best to like buy from like responsible grocery yeah. stores or like- I feel like I've been but, doing that though, too. I, yeah, but at the end of the day, like, it's not really, like, it's it's up to the supplier's discretion, you know, like, what they yeah. do, like, with their meat and stuff. Like, we're, like, we're never going to really know, like, to the full extent. And how do you know if the responsible grocery store is getting it from, exactly. Are they really responsible? Is the farm responsible? Like, exactly. Like, at this point, like, are they just a money-making scheme, too? Like, they're really getting the same. Bro, everything is. <laughs> but, like, you never really know what to trust, so we can just, we do our best. Yeah. We stay healthy. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> banned in the UK, the EU, and many of the countries who don't oh. think we should be eating things that have been washed with chlorine. That being said, the main reason isn't probably what you're thinking. It's actually because according to the EU law, they felt that by just using a quick chlorine bath, it's kind of cutting corners and allowing for farmers to basically not care about their entire production line and just go, we'll fix it in post, essentially. Mm -hmm. We'll just have really, really dirty, unhealthy, unsanitary farms and then just wash it all away with chlorine. They <laughs> went, 
We're not gonna allow that. We'd rather you actually have a good, healthy, safety production line rather than just bandage it. I'm sure at this point you've seen those gruesome images of chickens in incredibly small pens with nowhere to go, was, really yeah. dirty living space. Well, the whole point of this law isn't necessarily to protect humans from chlorine, but to make sure that that is much less likely to happen to have these really unsanitary living spaces for the animals. Whereas in the US, it doesn't really matter how the chickens are raised, how they're stored, how they're butchered, as long as you wash it with a bit of chlorine, everything's kind of okay. I don't really know how I feel Bro, about it. Bro, it just sounds so wild. I had yeah. Popeyes yesterday. I don't want to know where that chicken sandwich came from. Yeah. Because I know they're not using the top of the top. Exactly. <laughs> Tastes good though. Yeah. I mean, fry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like dead ass. <laughs> it does taste really good, but it's just so it's so bad for you. Like it's crazy. Yeah. We knowingly eat it too. Yeah. But like it's hard for this you can't it's hard to avoid. Like yeah. it's really hard to especially like at this point in our lives, like yeah, you can like go like get rich and like grow your own stuff, but like maybe eventually. But right. right now, like I don't have the time for that. I was I had only I could barely eat all day and I had, my options were Taco Bell, McDonald's and Popeyes. Pick your poison. Yeah, literally. Literally. I don't know pick where your all poison. that food. McDonald's probably worse. Bro. Yeah. Like your stuff out of Bro, sometimes I'd rather just not eat. Like that's what I fast yeah. sometimes he's like, fuck it. I just won't eat. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously I've grown up in the States and I've eaten plenty of chicken and I am totally fine. How would you feel about this? I, I like I said, I don't think it has anything to do with human health as much as just making sure your production line is up to scratch chicken scratch. As a fun fact, a big post-Brexit fear was that because of the supply chain issues that Brexit would cause, the UK would then have to start relying on chlorinated chicken. And a huge amount of people in the UK were very much against this. However, that was one of the very, very, very few Brexit fears that actually didn't come to fruition. So there's that. We do not use chlorinated chicken. Few. He just, he kind of put his stance in that he's Everything against else Brexit. Yeah, Rack top of me. Now like, this next yeah. one isn't just banned in the UK, the EU, Japan. No, it's actually banned in 160 countries. That's over three quarters of the known world, <laughs> as if there's an unknown world. However, the US is standing true saying, it's totally fine. We're gonna put ractopamine in our pork. 40 to 60% of pigs farmed in the US have ractopamine, a drug that enhances the lean muscle mass of the animals. There are definitely some serious questions about the safety of ractopamine, whose only use originally was to treat people with asthma until it was found out that it increased the production of animals that we went, let's just put it in some piggies. The National Pork Producers Council of the States have been lobbying the EU like mad, demanding that all food health and safety concerns be completely dismissed because, well, profits. Those pigs with ractopamine bring home quite the bacon. But the EFSA, or European Food Safety Authority, have said that the use of ractopamine in pigs has a very large chance of creating downer pigs. Downer pigs are essentially pigs that have been engorged with this lean muscle mass to the point where oh. they can no longer even stand. Their point basically what? meaning that this is incredibly cruel to the pigs. Also, ractopamine has shown to have catastrophic effects on the human cardiovascular system, as well as increase your anxiety levels. Some That's US wild. pork producers have begun phasing out the use of the drug, but like 160 countries, like the US FDA has gotta be sitting there like, am I out yeah. of touch? Like what? No, yeah. it's the 160 <laughs> other countries that are- Aren't there like 178 countries? Like, uh, we're, there's... like sometimes I really ask like, what is the FDA actually doing? Like. No, like actually, like what are they getting paid all that money for? Like, like realistically, and they're living and like in this oh this great country, but you have like shitty ass food standards. Like I know, I know. It just it doesn't it doesn't the two dots just don't connect. Anymore. Anyone who says they live in the uh, greatest place is wrong. Yeah, that's my thoughts. Hundred percent. There's always something better. Yeah, I don't like yeah. And the pork here definitely tastes different from when I've like gone to other countries. Definitely, like especially when I went to Canada. Canada pork tastes like better to me than the u.s pork i've had here but isn't that why canadian bacon is like a quality stamp i think canadian <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah canadian well, it's bacon a type of bacon too ham. yeah is it actually ham yeah but ham oh. i'm pretty sure ham is from a pig as well if i'm not mistaken yeah I so, think it's, so, so but... it's it's pork but yeah that thing about the pigs not being able to stand i feel like we have a similar yeah. thing with dog breeding like there's certain breeds of dogs uh what am i talking like the french bulldogs yeah or? those like they, like they can barely breathe like they sound like they have yeah. asthma like yeah they're like and muscular and stuff and all that yeah, yeah. i think that's a big thing in Amer in the united states like those those businesses get a lot of money yeah these people just don't realize what they're buying into like it's no. so unethical yeah and, and they, they'll also like breed like huge dogs that have like these huge pit bulls that are just like massive 
like for protection and everything yeah bro it's all yeah. about protection here. yeah i know <laughs> oh my god <laughs> or rather well these these pork lobbyists have given me quite a lot of money so i think it's kind of fine so so we've had milk we've had chicken we've had pork what is next bread all right get ready for this oh, because bread sold on. in the states bread. contains potassium bromate Ooh. and listen it's not your bromate. In fact, potassium bromate is used in the bread making process in the States because it helps bread rise faster, higher, and makes bread manufacturers quite a lot of dough. <laughs> but it's also heavily linked to cancer, nervous <laughs> system damage, and kidney damage. Yeah, so many puns are crazy. pretty much under all food bro. stuffs. <laughs> Bagels, bread rolls, bread crumbs, you name it. While it is completely banned in the UK and EU, in which our bread doesn't taste like sugar. I'm gonna be real sad to find out that the Cheesecake Factory bread has this stuff in it because that that bread, I don't care if you say it's sweet, it's delicious. Now, not all bread products in the States contain <laughs> potassium bromate. For those products that don't contain it, there are worse things, like something I'm not going to be able to pronounce. <laughs> For instance, like Pillsbury breadsticks, a lot of the nice little bun things you Bro, can why get those, in the freezer. Those are fire, though, I'm not gonna lie. Breadsticks, yeah. Yeah, this Pillsbury are, thing, you get anything yeah. out of a can, it's good. Yeah, Cinnamon yeah. rolls, Probably all that. The croissants, yeah, it's all pretty good. Yeah, you know what I've learned? Like, a lot of the super popular, like, companies who just have, like, staple foods, like... General Mills and stuff like that. Yeah. Those are usually the ones that are terrible. Like yeah, Hershey's, yeah, yeah. Reese's. Like those are the ones that are usually like the worst. I don't want to know what's in Hershey's, bro. Because <laughs> they're the, they're the cheapest ones, so it makes it makes the most. That's and why they're most mass produced. I think they have the longest ingredients list too. Yeah, all, the, all those big products yeah. for like such simple things. I come on the back. It's saying it has a hyphen between the words. No, I'm literally, like, like bro. <laughs> I need to be a. I need a BS in biochemistry bro, bro. to understand. <laughs> <this crap. laughs> Like <laughs> doing too much. <laughs> like Jimmy Dean sandwiches, breakfast oh, rolls. Those are and good such. too. They contain azodi oh, carbonamide, Damn. which is a chemical compound found in yoga mats as well as shoe soles. <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> Makes it extra spongy. The reason why so many US manufacturers use azodi carbonamide is that it makes the bread stuff look a lot whiter. Yeah, both in bread and cereal flour, it's used as a whitening agent and dough conditioner. While the FDA thinks it's totally fine to add this chemical compound to basically any bread product under the sun, it is banned in Europe, Singapore, and many other countries for its heavy link to respiratory problems as well as other health issues. And in Singapore specifically, if you are caught using this substance in any of your manufacturing process, you're jailed for 15 years and a fine of up to $450,000. That's serious. But I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Even Australia, who's usually pretty chill about a lot of things, do not use azode carbonamide. Don't do it. Finally, we've gotten to my favorite cereal. A lot of cereals in the States Bro, use what is that? which is a flavor enhancer. Now, I've got no problem with most flavor enhancers. Heck, I love me some monosodium glutamate, okay? Throw a little bit of MSG and everything. Mwah! But BHT, well, it's a little different. See, it's put in a lot of these cereals and things to enhance the flavors, and it only comes with mild side effects of decreasing your testosterone count and decreasing the quality <laughs> of your sperm. But also, there have been numerous studies to prove that BHT is an endocrine disruptor, so it actually has way more effects than that. Is it really making the food taste that much better? For me to have <laughs> less sperm? Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> oh no, what, what's it got in it? But it does lower your sperm count. <laughs> <laughs> BHT is used in a lot of these cereals because it just gives you that ah, little bit of a fresh feeling in the box. They actually line the bags with BHT, so it's just what? a bit fresher for a bit longer. Bro. Now, the US yeah, FDA Loki. has insisted BHT is totally safe in small quantities, but I don't know about you, but growing up in the States, I would eat three to four bowls of cereal in one sitting sometimes because that was yeah. my balanced breakfast, so... I don't know how I feel about that. Now, cereal producer General Mills in the States has oh, agreed to phase out bro. its use of BHT, yeah. but Kellogg's They're and so Post bad. in the States have agreed that maybe the pros outweigh the cons to their profits, I suppose. They don't really see it as surreal problem. Now, I remember a couple years back, they had finally brought over Fruit Loops to the UK, and I was like, whoa, finally, we get a cool American cereal. However, <laughs> this is what it looks like. If you're an American, you're like, what the hell is that? I know. Here's the difference between US and UK Fruit Loops. You see, legally speaking, you can't really sell the American Fruit Loops because it contains so many E numbers, is what they're called over here. I only recently found out about E numbers. My girlfriend brought it up like, oh, that's got a lot of E numbers. And I was like, Evan numbers? Mm -hmm. 
No. The E in E numbers actually stands for Europe and E numbers represent a number for each different food additive that exists. And in the US, we've got E numbers in pretty much everything. Think of all the brightly colored food you know. That's some E numbers right there. In 2007, a UK study found a clear link between the use of specific E numbers and hyperactivity in children. Now the E numbers that they actually found increased the hyperactivity in children were E102, E110, E122, and E124 all those different food dyes. Now, following these studies, there was huge public outcry in the UK. And in 2009, the UK implemented a temporary ban on these specific E numbers listed in the studies. But by ban, I don't mean that you weren't allowed to sell any products with them. Rather, you could, as long as somewhere on your packaging, there was a warning that stated that consumption of this item <laughs> may have an adverse effect on the activity and attention of children. Now, as you've seen, usually when this type of thing happens, the FDA just digs their heels in supported by lots of lobbyists' money, and they go, everything's fine, totally fine, don't worry about it. But even in this case, the FDA actually had to come out and be like, well, there is a chance that some children also will develop hivish rashes as a reaction to these E numbers. So it just seems like so many cons for what realistically is just brightly colored cereals. That being said, some- That brightly colored though is so important to their marketing and yeah. everything, like we, yeah. we really, Wow. And if, yeah, go ahead. They especially marketed it towards kids too, like with all these, like with like the drawings and stuff on the cereal boxes and everything. Yeah. And like, I remember like sometimes they'd have like mazes or little games in the back of the cereal boards. Like, you know, or like, items in the cereal. Yeah, remember exactly. That? Yeah. Like it's so marketed towards kids because they're the most like oblivious. Like they like, and parents are going to buy it. You know yeah. What I'm now that I wants think it. about it, bro, I haven't eaten that type of cereal in like years. Bro, yeah, exactly. It's really marketed towards kids too. It's, it's crazy. Wow. And also like, they would like they like they would always say like you know breakfast is the most important meal of the day and what would they have there bro, the cereal yeah I don't know why people say that and then we eat Fruit Loops yeah bro like, like it's just sugar like what is that gonna that's gonna, you, that's gonna kill me that's, that's that's probably worse and that's worse that's hey, you know bad. in preschool I used to have cereal with orange juice in it double what? sugar nah you're wild <laughs> you're a menace bro bro it just tasted so good like that sugar rush yo come on you should be locked up for that that's insane sometimes the uk <laughs> recipe of a u.s product is just awful i mean talking about the fruit loops listen i know it kind of looks like grass and it's not as appealing <laughs> as the pretty colors that caused me hyperactivity as a child but that British one is it would way be okay there. if it didn't <laughs> oh taste like God. garbage. Just tastes like cardboard. Kind of ruined the whole appeal of the sugary cereal. I do think it's very important that we're not just pumping our children full of sugar. So in a way I'm thankful, but also as an adult, I'm like, I also want the ability to just kind of have that. We don't ban chocolate cake. But then again, we don't market chocolate cake to children as a breakfast treat. Not even a treat, just a meal. Then again, I grew up believing that donuts are a breakfast food. And I stand mm. by that belief. Certain crumb coffee cakes are also uh, breakfast food in my book. So mm -hmm. my brain is a place that's so confusing. <laughs> it's got warring cultures up there. I mean, the Fruit Loops in the States are flavored with like artificial grape flavors and berry flavors. In the UK, and I'm not kidding here, their Fruit Loops are flavored with nettles and spinach. What? I'm spinach? sorry. What What's child is going to be like, Mmm, things that hurt me, unless I have a dock leaf, or spinach. But research in this video has helped me realize that that's why it's so hard to find my second favorite soda, Sunkist. It's just oh, yeah, specific thing, E numbers that make it just not really bad. that profitable to sell over here. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you are wondering, birch beer, that's my favorite soda. Very hard to get, pretty much only in the Northeast of the US, but it's the best. One final that. interesting I note I found research in this video that? is that it seems yeah. the US's Food and something. Drug Administration care more about probabilities. How small is the chance that a negative side effect uh, could happen? Yeah. If small enough, that's okay. Whereas the European agency is more focused on possibilities. If there is any po- All right, what do you think about this right here? Yeah, that's low key BS. Like, I feel like the EFSA makes a way more sense. So we're getting, so like the FDA is just like, oh, we're, we're just a, a small percentage of people will get a few kids might okay. get a rash from this. Yeah, like that's nothing serious. But that just sounds like such an American thing to say. Like, yeah. you know, some people have to be yeah. down for other and people. It won't, to be, it won't up. be me. That's what those exactly. It'll, it'll be some. It'll be some other people in a distant land that I don't really know about. So I think it'll be all. Bro, okay. people at the FDA—they're not crunching on Fruit Loops. No, they're yeah. putting it all out. No, yeah, exactly. They probably got their own chef, <laughs> own farm, and everything. No, Farms facts. run under EU standards. Yeah, they probably got a whole other <laughs> FDA for them. Bro. <laughs>
<laughs> the possibility of a negative side effect, especially in an additive that's non-essential, they'd rather just have it removed than risk consumer health. And so if you found any of these banned substances to be a bit blown out of proportion, well, you might be looking at it from more of a probability standpoint as opposed to a possibility one. But each agency is doing what they think is best for the citizens they watch over at the end of the day. Whether or not you agree is up to you. But let's just say foods dubiously banned in other countries is your passion. Well, why not tell the world about it by making a blog using today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace, of course, you want. But when it comes to children, especially because a lot of these items are marketed at children, it gets a bit more dubious. I mean, a parent shouldn't have to religiously research every single item Facts, that they're yeah. giving to the child to make sure it's not a carcinogen, you know? However, I mean, they should be doing a little research at the end of the day. You should be looking, what am I giving my kid? but the majority of people probably aren't. So it's probably in our best interest to have these laws in place. Facts. I don't know. What is your opinion on this? Thank you very much for watching today's video. Don't forget, there is a part two coming in a week or two, so be sure to subscribe. It'll be right here. All right. What do you think? I like Evan's videos. Yeah. He's That's always cool. well-researched. Yeah. This man dropped like eight puns throughout this one. <laughs> yeah, literally. I, I didn't think he was going to keep it going, but he just... Yeah. He kept on him out. But I don't think there was really much surprising about this video like no i think most americans know Honestly, i don't know i don't, I, I do you don't think, think so do you think I a don't. lot of people are just completely oblivious and they think that this is the norm well the ones who say this is the best country on earth definitely yeah i think a good amount of people <laughs> yeah i think there's <laughs> a lot of people wrong. who just aren't educated enough or just don't care enough because that's just like how like they were brought up and their values and everything and that's why we have so many obese people and yeah. a lot of obese kids and stuff yeah. Like, I'm sure if they knew, they probably wouldn't. I mean, I don't know. Some of them have no choice because they, 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 a lot of people who are economically just, um, unfortunately. Interesting you bring up that point. Yeah. Um, I got something recommended in my YouTube this week. It was like a Pacific Island nation, and they, they had some of the highest obesity rates in the world. Pacific Island nation? Yeah, I forgot the country. Mm -hmm. But um, they're just like, they they got used up for their natural resources by settlers nothing new and mm. then now they just have to there's no all the land isn't farmable so they have to bring in like processed foods what? and canned goods so everyone's eating it and like almost everyone's obese that's like, awful they showed a video of the citizens bro that's terrible i'm saying like the food you eat is so important and it and it it plays a critical role in your nation and stuff like honestly when i was on my trip in europe this summer yeah i felt like the quality of food was so yeah I'm not necessarily saying it always tasted better, but it always tasted like fresher, yeah, or like more natural. Like, yeah, exactly. That's I could definitely see, and and uh, Ryan noticed that as well, especially when we we're in Germany. Like mm -hmm. the quality of food was so high. Britain as well. Britain definitely just yeah. healthier. healthier. Yeah, bro. That's probably why there's not much of a like of, of a need for a gym over there and stuff. Yeah. Over here, that's huge. Like you know, health is huge. But if you just do the simple things right. You know what I'm saying? You drink good quality water. And they walk a lot more. Food. Yeah, exactly. That's another thing. Like, you can literally just be healthy by just living. Like, you don't yeah, have to just... worry about cardio and all that. You just get cardio by living, which is how yeah. it should be. It should be just a natural thing. Yeah, but society progresses and we stray farther and farther away. Like, here, you can literally... There's instances where you you, you walk to your car, you walk to, into the office, you sit at your desk all day, walk back to your car, and, and walk back into your house. Like, you can yeah. literally... Like walk less than a mile easily. Literally in a day. Because of this car nation. Yeah, and 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 like people feel good about it. Like that's, that's a productive day for them. They got their stuff done. Not all of it. <laughs> Little do they know. We putting the work in. Um, but anyways, guys, interesting video. Let us know if you want to us to watch the Europe foods that are banned in the United States. Yeah. I think that'd be an interesting one to see what made that FDA ban something for once. <laughs> and yeah. uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.